following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good day, folks. Welcome to the January 14th, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Zed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. We need to make that one little two by four shift. Well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past eight o'clock in the morning. That's right. If you're listening live at one o'clock, thanks so much for doing so. So we are recording today's show uh, between eight and nine. We're going to make it as pertinent as we can for you while you're listening at one to uh, two. And if you aren't listening live, listening live, we would love to hear from you. So a couple different ways to do that. You can always give us a call 877-927-6648. If you can't call in, We've got another way. You can send me an email. Send it to steve at tfnn.com. Now, inside that subject heading, if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question, that way I can pick out your email, which is important to me, versus all the trash that, you know, each of us get each and every day in our email system. Of course, the third way would be if you're inside our Tiger's Den. We would love to hear from you there. You can be a private ping. Public ping does not matter. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now we got uh, Sea of Red out here. The Sea of Red is uh, not just in the U.S., but across the uh, board in Asia and Europe. So last night you had the uh, Shanghai finish down 35 points and EK off 364. That was a little over 1%. Hang Seng was uh, off two tenths of a percent. Right now in uh, Germany, the DAX is down 162 points. That's 1%. The FTSE stronger than that. The DAX only off three tenths of a percent. She's trading out at 75.40. We'll go see what all of that means. In the U.S., we've got U.S. equity futures trading lower. The Dow down by 203 right now. The Nasdaq 130. The S&P 29. The Russell 2016. Gold is up a buck. Silver's down 19 cents. Light 3 crude is trading out at 81.44. That's back about 20 pennies as we speak. The 30-year Treasury down 12 ticks. Trading out at 156.05. So where do we want to begin? I suppose you probably want to begin with the U.S. markets. I'll tell you where we begin. We'll begin with uh, what I usually do as a market update i'll do this at uh i'll do i tell you what we're going to begin we're going to begin with our first caller and that is brent in martinez california brent thanks for calling thanks for holding how are you doing today this morning oh good morning steve i'm doing well how are you i'm doing uh, excellent nice to hear your voice early and uh, so i believe you called about to discuss the nqs is that correct yeah here we are another friday you know, there's always potential for you know, I like to do these trades that are the weekly trades on the on the options. I did my gold trade yesterday, so I'm just looking at. You know, it looks like we're getting down on the on the cues to you know that Monday lower, you know, into that yes. bar anyway. So I just wanted to get your thoughts on. Do you think this is potentially that was the B to C leg up, and now we're going to you know surpass that? Well, we're, I think it's going to be lighter volume in my mind. Just looking at what I saw this morning, but. Just want to get your thoughts on that, and if there is any kind of potential setup on the, you know, shorter term uh, charts here for a potential bottom in the in the Nasdaq. Sure. Okay. So let's try to answer that question first. So I'm just going to switch panels here. Give me a moment. We'll go to the eight panel uh, multi time frame uh, chart for us. So and we'll be able to answer that question fairly easily, I believe. So Brent's question was: He's looking for some type of setup uh, to potentially go long. And uh, so to do that, what we want to be able to see, folks, is some type of bottoming signal on the intraday time frame charts. So the very upper right hand corner last night, about 10 o'clock, in fact, at 10 o'clock, we got the uh, uh, confirmed Rosemont indicator signal that led to a uh, bounce. 
Uh, we, ex we expected that bounce because of yesterday's one-day rate of change above plus 10 percent. Now, this morning we can see that that pattern has failed. I'll just put my. I'll just actually expand out the chart here, make it a little bit easier for people to see. So you can see. So the reason why yesterday's Rhodes Momentum Indicator signal was confirmed was because at 10 p.m. we got that nice little bullish piercing candle. There was a new profile that formed right after that out here. So now what we know is that pattern has failed. And Brent, in order to get some type of bottoming signal on a 30-minute time frame chart, we would need to see there's there's still a rose momentum indicator signal triggered. But what I would want to see is some type of bullish reversal candle. Now, it's possible that we get that by 8.30 this morning. Um, price has to close probably at about the 15... 400 ish type range out here about halfway into the bar that would give us another piercing candle out there uh, but uh, so so we don't have that as we speak at 8 11 in the morning if we look at the other time frames out here the other intraday time frames the 60 minute chart uh, had a TD nine count bottom pattern that failed so I don't have anything here although I do see that on a 60 minute basis we are in wave number seven and so that just simply needs a higher low to form out there so that's a potential for a bottom. With regard to the 120-minute time frame charts, or the 240 or the uh, 300, I don't see any bottoming patterns coming off of the highs from uh, yesterday, uh, as an example. So if we take a look at the five-hour time frame chart, that had the best topping signal yesterday. That was a TD9 count. And then price at about 10, 30, 11 o'clock in the morning just went ahead and had that Nike swoosh to the downside. Right now, price is testing the breakout level, which is at 15,403. So if price can hold above that, now this current candle on a five-hour basis, I think that this does not close until 9 o'clock. So, you know, Brent, look at 9 o'clock. If price holds 15,403, that might be a signal to us. Now, price might be just coming back and testing the lows of Monday, as Brent pointed out. Now, Monday's candle was a hammer candle. And so, Brent, that's going to be really important, that low. And that low specifically, let me, uh, is priced at 15,150.50. So if price closes below that, you know we have that expression around here. If you are long, you're wrong. If you close below the bottom of a hammer candle, now that might be support. So we don't know if that area is going to hold or not. You had mentioned light volume. And uh, so with regard to the volume, the easiest metric that I have to take a look at the volume activity is just simply to go to the index ETFs. So I'm going to switch screens here for a moment. We go back and forth. And you can ask questions, but just trying to answer the questions that you uh, have or, or maybe maybe pose questions in people's minds out there. So if we take a look at yesterday's activity, and here's the chart that shows us each of the index ETFs, that being for the SPY in the upper left-hand corner, for the S&P, for the NASDAQ 100, the Qs in the upper right, the Dow Diamonds in the lower left, the IWM for the Russell 2000. So if you look at the yellow horizontal lines on my screen out here and the volume level, you'll see that price was pulling back into those swing points, a swing point that is being tested as we speak right now for the daily time frame for the NQ. But here in the index ETFs, everything was pulling back on lighter volume than that of Monday. What I don't know is what today's volume might be. The other thing to note inside the SPY or the NQ was price is also pulling back to the bottom of their daily profile levels. So if those areas fail, um, that would suggest a lower price out here. So from a volume standpoint, uh, you're absolutely right. At least that was as of yesterday. No idea what today's volume might be. Uh, but it's got that potential that you're looking for. And that potential would be uh, best um, used if we could get some type of bottoming signals in these intraday time frame charts. Brett, we're going to a break here. Please do me a favor and hold on. We'll come back to you. And I want to answer any questions that you've got. This is Steve Rhodes with Brent in Martinez, California, 814 in the morning. Thanks for listening live if you are, as well as the recorded show. We'll be back in just a few moments. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. 
For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. We're on the line with Brent in Martinez, California. We're ripping apart the NQ. Uh, in that first segment, what we uh, determined was there, there, were, there was no confirmed bottoming signal on an intraday time period to suggest that Brent or anybody else out there might pull a trigger. However, um, if we take a look at – so Monday's candle in the NQ was a bullish hammer candle. And if somebody were to ask me the question, if you've got a hammer candle and price is moving into it, where is the best place to go ahead and put a long trade in? My answer would be somewhere between the middle of the wick of that candle and the bottom. Well, if we take a look at from the low of the hammer candle from Monday up to the rally into uh, Wednesday, uh, what we will see is that price has made its way back to a 0.786 retracement. So although, Brent, I don't have any kind of bottoming signal per se on the intraday time frame charts, this certainly would qualify as a reason or a logistical reason for you to consider taking that trade. So I just wanted to throw that out there as well. Um, and if price doesn't hold this level, the 15, uh, 335 ish range, then price should go down and test the bottom of that hammer candle at 15, 152. So, given all of that, what questions has that posed in your mind? Which charts would you like me to go back to uh, or to take a look at with you to answer any further questions? No, this is great, Steve, as, as always, but I'm pretty confident, at least what I've been seeing so far this morning, it's going to be lighter volume going into this low. And that doesn't mean it can't surpass that, but at least that part of it I'm pretty confident in as far as yes. it being a bottoming pattern. That I'm just going to be following and watching. And we've had, you know, some good movement. We saw what happened Monday. Doesn't mean it's yes. going to repeat, but, you know, it got had it driven down there. It had a nice big rebound off of that. So that's what I'm going to be looking for. So 
Yeah, so so here's so on Monday, so just to kind of go back to Monday's low because that was taking place as I was coming on the air about 15 minutes before I actually came on the air. So I just want to go back to one set of charts out here before we uh, before we leave you for the uh, day and the uh, week, and just to point out what uh, you know what was also occurring then. Not saying that that's going to occur now, but it might. And that was that on the 30 minute charts out here. So I'm going to pull the uh, just. Uh, I was hoping I could show it in an easy way, uh, all four charts, but I've got to come back here. So on Monday, what was taking place at 11 o'clock in the morning was we had a, a TD9 count bottom, a seventh wave move bottom, a road momentum indicator bottom. And Brent, that was occurring on each of the 30 minute time frame charts in the equity future contract. I mentioned as we were coming on the air and that was here at one o'clock. So this is where my candle is right then. So we had the bottom signal. Price pulled back into that bottom signal, very much like we're seeing take place with price pulling back in that hammer candle, and then it just simply uh, took off. So that was the retracement. So ideally, you'd get that type of, at least some type of bottoming signal on the 30-minute uh, time frame charts. We don't have that as we're taking a look at right now, uh, but that might uh, unfold uh, you know, before the market opens. So uh, I hope that all of this helps you out and everybody else that's listening, because I know they also are trying to figure out which way are these markets going to go today. Is there anything else that I can uh, provide? to you no that's great to go back and look at that Steve because I do I was of course listening to you that day and that was a great call and at least you know highlighting that that was happening so yeah uh, the other thing the other interesting thing here was, we're having a good volatility there's no question about that and it's given opportunities both ways so you just have to be certainly a little nimble maybe more so than than you know at other times but there's a lot of opportunity out there and you just have to be you know of course paying close attention to the, I think the shorter term stuff is, is you know, pretty critical at this point. Yes. The other the other interesting thing, thing that took place uh, this week so far, and, and certainly on Monday, and, and take a look at the NQ, uh, is if we look at the weekly chart out here. So on the weekly chart, so whenever we close above, especially if it's a bearish structured profile, in this case here, it was a weekly bearish structured profile. In the week of October 18th, price closed above that. We need to see two closes above a level of resistance to suggest that it's really a breakout. Well, you got that the very following week, and then price went up, you know, and made its high so far that no November 22nd uh, day, I believe, or maybe it was, uh, yeah, November 22nd. Um, and then when you close above the top of a bearish structured profile, if the move lower is only a counter trend move, where price will find support is at the center or the top. It's typically the center of that profile. Well, the center of the profile for the NQ is at 15.104. The low that we saw on Monday was at 15.152. So really very close uh, to that level, about 48 points away. But we can see that that is held. Now, if we get a close below 15.104 today, folks, what that suggests to uh, us is that we should see a move down to the 14.804 level. That would also, on a daily basis, then likely generate an A to B equals CD to the downside, even if it is with light volume. And and that gives us price projection of 14.502. So we'd say if the 15.104 level fails, we would expect or anticipate a move to 14.502 to 14.804 level. So I just thought I'd uh, finish it off that way, uh, Brent. If there's no other questions, uh, thanks for uh, listening to my blabbering out there. And uh, have a great weekend. Yeah, you covered all of it, Steve. That was my other question about, you know. Was that potentially just to be the sea leg that we've been going through the last you know three days? And, it's uh, possible. So, it's it's yeah, possible. Yeah, I, we're we're going to find I, out. I think today potentially. So. Yes. 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 Well, we'll find out oh, soon right, enough. Well. So, hey, Brett, thanks for waking up early, spending time with us this morning, and uh, we'll look forward to speaking to you hopefully next week sometime. All right. Thanks so much, Steve. Just have a great uh, rest of your day and a, and a great weekend, and I'll talk to you soon. Will do, will do. We've got a question coming in from the uh, Tiger's Den, and that is from uh, Ruby. And Ruby wants to take a look at the uh, U.S. dollar index out here. So let's go do that for her. We'll do this a couple of different ways, uh, meaning we'll take a look at a couple of different sets of charts for her. So I've just got to find my first set of charts out here as long as we're on this screen. Um, it's right here. Okay, here we go. So if we take a look at the U.S. dollar index, what do we know? Well, we know a couple of things. Maybe it's easier if I turn off some of these trend lines. So give me a moment to do that. Just make it a little bit clearer. But what I'm going to say is what we do know, Ruby, is that uh, price has closed below both the bottom of the daily and the um, weekly profiles out here. Uh, nope, I don't want to turn that off. Oh, what did I do? Good Lord. 
Okay, good. Th- thought I pretty much just screwed everything up there, which which pre- pretty much I did. Okay, so now we can see the upper charts of what we're looking at here, Ruby. So price is below the uh, bottom of the uh, daily and the uh, weekly profile. Now, th- th- right now at 825 in the morning, we've got a hammer candle that is forming, but uh, who knows what it's really going to be. And there's there's certainly an A to B equals CD to the downside. So, Ruby, the first thing I would say, I'll, I'll show you that A to B equals CD pattern out here. So first, let's take a look at this. For the A point, I'm going to use the high from the uh, trading day of December 15th. And for the B point, I'm going to use the low from December 31st. And the C point is going to be the retracement into January 1st. So we're at the one-to-one level out here. It was a 68% retracement. And so, Ruby, if you were to get a bullish reversal candle today, then the U.S. dollar index would generate a Gartley buy pattern. I don't know if that's what we're going to uh, get or not. Yesterday's candle was not a hammer candle. Today could be, but we're we're too we're, we're too early into the session to know that. Now, if we don't get a hammer candle or bullish reversal candle today inside the U.S. dollar index, then that would suggest on the A to B equals C D price projection um, uh, level that the next target area will be 94.34. 9367 is the uh, center of its bullish structured uh, monthly profile. So that all makes sense. So that would be the downside target uh, that I would be looking at, Ruby, unless we see some type of bullish reversal candle. Now, what I'm going to do here momentarily, we're about to go to a break, but I'm going to switch over to the uh, currency pairs that make up the U.S. dollar index, the euro, the yen, the pound, the Canadian dollar, the uh, uh, Swiss uh, uh, franc, and the Swiss corona, uh, and the Swedish krona out there. Uh, so this is Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We come back, we'll finish looking at the U.S. dollar index for Ruby and the Tiger's Den. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at the uh, U.S. dollar index, um, and the uh, bottom right-hand panel is the uh, right-hand corner is the is that instrument. So here's what we know. We, we took a look at the potential for an A to B equals CD. In order for that to happen, we need to see a bullish reversal candle today. If that does not occur, another price par uh, target level would be 93.81. That's its TD9 counter breakdown area. So we can see it formed a Rhodes momentum indicator top. That was this bear sash candle out here. That was on the trading day of, give me a moment. Uh, the trade day of December the uh, 15th. So these currencies are what make up that basket of, uh, the, these are the basket of currencies that make up the U.S. dollar index. So we start with the euro, which is, I don't remember what the percentage is out there, 57%, something like that. We don't have any kind of a topping pattern out here. Of course, like the dollar shows a hammer candle, the euro shows a bear shooting star. Right, so it's really the euro that is primarily controlling what the uh, U.S. dollar index is doing. So uh, although I'm sure I can draw an A to B equals CD, so if we do get a bearish reversal candle in the euro, uh, which could be a shooting star, that would mean we'd have to see basically no activity for the rest of the day, uh, then you'd have a Gartley sell. The uh, dollar would have a Gartley buy. Short of that, the euro is likely targeting the 1.16 the level. That is its TD9 breakdown area. Now, the Japanese yen... Uh, is targeting the 113.55 level. That is its TD9 count breakout area. If price closes below that, that suggests that we go back and we, re 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 we revisit. Boom. Tough for Stevie to say that one this morning. Don't know why. It must have been the uh, the water I'm drinking here. But uh, uh, would, we would revisit the December lows. If we take a look at the Great British Pound, this has formed a uh, sell the D point pattern. Yesterday was a, sh a bearish shooting star, a TD9 count pattern. And we can see that its oscillator on change line changed colors, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, actually. And uh, we this would, now that we've got the valid topping signal, we should see price and that line catch up to each other. So the Great British Pound should get weaker. Um, and if it doesn't get weaker, it indicates the pattern that's going to go up to its TD9 count breakdown level at the 138 area. But it should get weaker and pull back to that oscillator and change line. That would put strength in the U.S. dollar index. If we get that topping signal in the euro, that should put uh, uh, help to bottom, uh, to create a bottoming pattern inside the uh, dollar. The yen has been strengthening. So uh, if it finds support at 113 and starts to move higher, uh, it will weaken. The U.S. dollar index will get stronger out there. you got the Canadian, the dollar, the loonie, back at a breakout level of 124. So, Ruby, I hope that this helps you out with regard to the U.S. dollar index. It's important, I believe, to take a look at what the other currency pairs. Uh, we don't need to really spend any time on the Swiss franc other than the fact that it's back at a support level. And that is its TD9 count breakout level. These two currencies, the corona and the franc, are only about 6% of the total of the U.S. dollar index. So it's really the top four that we want to uh, focus on. Uh, it doesn't hurt to to know what the other currency pairs are doing but that's our u.s dollar index i hope that helps you out i also know you wanted to take a look at the 30-year treasury so if you wanted to look at it others want to look at it as well and here as we take a look at the 30-year treasury in the upper left hand corner is the daily time frame and it has confirmed yesterday confirmed a buy the d point pattern so we've got the one this generated one to 1.272 a to b equals cd pattern yesterday was a bullish engulfing candle that wrapped around that little doji candle from the prior day so what this would suggest to you and I, Ruby, is that the 30-year Treasury, because of that confirmed bottom signal, should at least make a run for the top of its a week, a daily profile. And that's at the 157.18. doesn't say that that's what's going to happen today, but that's a signal that was generated yesterday. And the other element that you've got here is you know you've got support at 155.06. So I don't see anything else on the 30-year Treasury side to really assist you. So you've got that confirmed bottom. Price should go target the 157.18 level out there. So I hope that that helps you out. Uh, thanks so much for the request this morning. We do have requests that came in by email, and so I just simply want to get to uh, that. Don't want uh, time to slip away. And that was coming from uh, Hector. And Hector wanted to take a look at, you're welcome, Ruby, and Hector wanted to take a look at AIG, which is what you've got up on the screen right now. Now, Hector had specifically asked me to uh, draw in an A to B equals CD pattern. If I open up, which I'm going to, open up this daily time frame chart out here and you know there's many a to b equals cd patterns here that we could come up with but really what stuck out to stevie was more of a consolidation pattern now i don't know if this is going to end up being a consolidation pattern or not if price does not take out the high from the trading day of november 5th that high out there was 62 dollars and 54 cents if price does not take out that high 
then we likely have a consolidation here. And again, I'm looking at the daily time frame. Now, there is a new profile that formed yesterday. And that new profile, Hector, formed below price. That's a bullish message. But if this is, and, and price was moving into the swing point, that swing point I'm referring to, November 5th, that had volume of 6.7 million shares. And yesterday, you were up with 3.4. So it doesn't seem like it has the volume to push through this area. And therefore, I would look at AIG would suggest to me that price would pull back to the 59.82 to 60.12 area. That's what the daily time frame chart shows us. If I try to come up with a A to B equals CD pattern for the weekly time frame, and and I would here's what it, here's what I would here's what I would look at, and that would be the A point down here from March of 2020, the B point out here being June of uh, 2020, and then the C point being a September 21st uh, pattern. So now you can see we're up at the one to 1.618 area out here. Are there other A to B equal CD patterns that we could draw? And sure, that would take us much higher than that. But I'm really not going to draw those patterns in Hector. And primarily, I'm not going to because we need to see if this consolidation pattern forms, holds, or, or, or what it does out there. So I will bring over the white background charts for you just so that you and I can look to see if there's any other signals out here. So back to the daily time frame. And on the daily time frame, so 62.54 was its TD9 breakdown level. I didn't actually have this chart open, so I, was, I didn't realize that we actually had a TD9 count top or a pattern that formed yesterday. So you could still have a higher high today and maintain that pattern. So here's the cool thing. If you're in AIG, you love this pattern. Well, you, you sort of love it because you're at a stage here where you've got a valid topping signal at a prior high, moving into it with lighter volume, at a TD9 breakdown area out there, and an oscillator and change line that has changed colors. So everything is really set up for a pullback. Turns out that that oscillator and change line is right at the center of yesterday's bearish structured profile where we would expect a counter trend rally to find support. So at this stage here, Hector, even though I don't think this is exactly what you were asking for, what it looks like to me is that AIG is going to go ahead and pull back. Now, the cool thing is, whether it's yesterday's high or today's high, whichever one of those two is the highest high, if on Monday price closes above that, it'll negate these patterns. You can forget everything that Stevie said. It is nothing but a bunch of hooey, but right now it's not a bunch of hooey. It's we're just interpreting what the message of the uh, markets are. So looks to me, Hector, like AIG is getting ready to top, pull back. And uh, if it can hold that green oscillator and change line, it will maintain a, a neutral type of a signal out there. So I hope that helps you out. And uh, thanks so much for the uh, request. Uh, John in Philly's typing in. This is a, uh, uh, Philly, your choice. If you would like to talk to the... Uh, oh, that's... Oh, do we have John on the line? Is that what we have? Do I have John? Ah, perfect. John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. Sorry about my inability to read a message and know what it actually means. <laughs> uh, it's early. Snafu's abound, sir. Snafu's abound. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's okay. We'll recover quickly. Uh, Steve, just uh, I wanted to follow up upon the yes. discussion you just had with Brent from Martinez. Yeah. Uh, specifically... As I'm looking at the NASDAQ futures contract with this nice little flush that hit at 730, um, at my chart work and yours, of course, shows that this is leg G lower on the 30-minute bar chart. Hey, John, I didn't realize we we're so close to the break. Do me a favor. Just hold the, hold the thought for about three or four minutes, and we come back. Uh, the mic is yours. This is Steve Rhodes with John and Philly. We'll be back in just a few moments. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We're on the line with John in Philly. We're taking a look at the NQ out here. He was pointing out uh, wave number seven. That's letter G. That's part of the uh, Chapman wave. He was uh, referring to the 30-minute time frame chart, which you can see uh, looks like it uh, may be forming. Uh, I've got other intraday time frame charts out here. So you can see on the 15-minute chart, you've also – now there you've got a confirmed seventh wave move. You've got that same thing on the 10-minute chart and on the five minute chart and on the 60 minute time frame chart. So the, this market on the intraday basis, John, and you picked it out, you are the uh, conductor here, definitely singing in the key of G. So the floor is back to, uh, we, we shift the floor or the microphone back to you. Yes, uh, thank you, Steve, uh, for that uh, detailed discussion. Uh, and um, I have a bottom line question that I'll pose after 60 seconds here. First, by way of background, uh, I am trading uh, ex from a position swing trade uh, perspective on the short side exclusively. Mm -hmm. Reason being, since that November 22nd high in the NASDAQ 100, we've got a pattern of lower highs, excuse me, lower lows and lower highs. Uh, we haven't busted any major support as of yet, as your work clearly documents. But my suspicion is the risk is that that, in fact, happens, that we bust support. I'm thinking uh, in my mind of stuff, that, of uh, ideas that were first highlighted and brought to the attention of listeners at, on TFNN by Stan Harley back November 4th time frame, in mm -hmm. which he showed there was an interesting potential analog developing between the NASDAQ here in 2021 and the Nikkei 225 back in 1989. And thus far, here in 2022, that analog is uh, in force. It seems to be repeating, at least for the moment. That doesn't mm -hmm. say anything about next week, next month. Sure, but, sure. But uh, my suspicion is on those rich, highly valued, uh, over-owned tech names, the risk is of uh, further decline. Uh, we'll see if that happens, of course. But uh, with that as background, uh, 
now that we've declined since Wednesday on the NASDAQ futures up there at the 16,000 mark, and with that 30-minute bar chart forming a uh, Chapman wave leg G lower, potentially trough G, mm-hmm. with that patented Saratoga Bob mm-hmm. uh, peak, uh, excuse me, trough G buy signal, and we're just so happens to be at the famous Larry Pezzavento Fib 786 support mark on that futures question. Where does this uh, NASDAQ futures, the NQH2s, where does it need to rally to very short term to lead your work to suggest, hey, this low right here down at uh, 15310 area uh, will stand for more than a couple of hours? Ah, good question. Okay, so you posed that question to me, and I'm just going to try to answer that question in taking a look at these charts out here. So the first level that I would be looking for, and I'd really like to, to take it off of the 30-minute time frame, John, would be the 15,389-ish area. That's that red oscillator and change line. So at a minimum, that is where price needs to close above. Because we've got that seventh wave uh, clearly on the 60-minute time frame chart as a well out there, um, its level is at about the 15,417. So you got 15,389 to 15,417. If price can close above that, that would be a signal of at least a further rally. Now that further rally, uh, the key area of resistance there, John, and the reason is that I cho- I'm choosing the 60-minute time frame chart. And the reason that I am is as I take a look at charts to try to answer a question like that, what I look for is where are resistance levels that have been tested that have uh, held. And the one that sticks out to me that is clear that held was the top of the profile on the 60 minute time frame. Folks, that is the upper right hand corner chart. In fact, I'll just simply expand this out. Uh, that way we're all looking at the exact same chart. And we can see that the rally that took place overnight ran into resistance at 15,541. So we got the intraday, the 30 minute time frame chart last night at time at 10 o'clock generated the roads momentum indicator bottom signal. But on the 30 minute chart, it doesn't show why did price stop where it did. So I'm just going to size this down again. So because price actually had it traded above the top of that profile that was present at that time. So there was no logical reason that I could come up with why on a 30 minute chart did price stop there. And it's one of the reasons why I have these multi time frame charts because I'm looking for different areas of resistance and where is a key resistance level that held. And so John really it goes back to that 60 minute time frame. So the real answer to your question is where would price have to close above to suggest that there's really some legs and this is just not a counter trend move would be for me right now I'd have to say it's 15 541 so 15,542 would be the number. Does, uh, does that make sense to you, how I came to that conclusion? Steve-O, that's all I need to know. That, that's the bottom line and uh, thorough discussion thereof. So thank you. You're welcome. And always good to hear from you too, John. So have a, a fantastic uh, weekend, and we'll look forward to uh, seeing you tomorrow. Thanks for sharing with everybody in the den, as you always do. That was John in uh, Philly. Uh, so I do have another question that has come in. Right now we've got Dow futures down 265. Uh, S&P futures are down 37. NASDAQ is down 140. But uh, we've got a question here from Tim M. So let's get, uh, let me change charts here. Give me a moment or change screens, I should say. And uh, we'll get over to the black background charts. I'm going to go ahead and put the instrument that he's looking for, which is ACLS. That is Excellus Technologies. Now, uh, just give me a moment here to pause. And uh, the reason is I, I want to get my other charts up on the screen so that I can uh, get this symbol input. And we can take a look at a daily, weekly, and a monthly uh, set of charts here. Can ACLS. Uh, so, okay, so I've got that going. Those will get updated. So the question here from Tim is, uh, could you please look, uh, take a look at uh, Excel Technologies from the daily and weekly perspectives, looking to take a long position when it looks ripe for the picking out here? Well, so you've got a brand new daily profile that formed yesterday, Tim. And so the support level or an area to be considering would be 6527. 
Uh, closed yesterday at 6740. I don't know what's doing in the uh, pre market, but that would be an area to be looking at. Uh, price is right now above the top of its weekly profile, and we're going to go in a moment and figure out if there were any kind of bottom signals out here for ACLS. So, but price is above that level that, uh, you know, even if there is a topping signal, would generate a neutral uh, position. Now, that would change, Tim, if you get a close below 67.19 today. That's the top of that weekly profile. So, in the weekly time frame charts, what do we know? What we do know here, uh, the daily time frame, this top with a TD9 count and a Rhodes momentum indicator signal. And price did exactly what it was supposed to do. It pulled all the way back to where it broke out from. So that took place on the uh, 10th. That was three days ago. Uh, was that uh, Monday? Yeah. So that was Monday out here. So ACL has pulled. That was your that was your potential. That was your buy area. That was your buy point. You were looking for a buy point. Now, here's the good news. That was the good news. Here's the bad news. Perhaps you get the bottom signal out there. Again, price pulling back to a breakout level. What's price do? Runs right up to that oscillator and change line. That's at 71.89 and pulls back. So where are we really at? We're really at kind of a neutral position. If you want to take an attempt at a trade here, it'd be between 64.50 and 65.21. And if price closed below 64.50, Tim, I would exit that position and say, nope. Uh, that pattern doesn't look right. Maybe we, this is going to form an A to B equals CD to the downside. We get back. We'll finish looking at AC, LS. Be right back, folks. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks. We're taking a look at Excelis uh, Technologies out here for Tim M., who's looking for an entry point. So yesterday, the pullback out here was with lighter volume. The volume from January 10th was 584,000 shares. Yesterday was 431. Price still closed inside that. It looks to me like price should at least go tag that 6527 level out there. But if price begins moving lower, or if price takes out the swing point, 6390, that was Monday's low, then that's going to set up an A to B equal CD to the downside. And that could set up a Gartley buy pattern. What we'd be looking for there, Tim, is for that pattern to then generate some type of bullish reversal candle as price approaches either the 5930 or 5557 level. That's not the message that we we have right now but uh, I think you've got to kind of uh, watch how today trades as well I don't know how this what this tracks out here um, so I'd want to understand the index that is tracking uh, to uh, uh, you know to understand what that index is doing as well so I do hope that that helps you out but we've got a minute to go here and if you are listening live uh, thanks so much for joining me early this morning and, uh, and if you're listening uh, uh, at the normal time frame I hope that this uh, show is helpful to you Overall, the most important levels to be watching today, and I just want to give those to you, are going to be the bottom of the weekly profiles. The most important one right now, I would say, would be the ES Mini. And that's at 45, 49, 25. If price closes below that for this week, of course, we would need two consecutive closes below a key level of support. But if price did close below that today, it is generating for us a change in trend signal. Similar to what we saw, but not exactly the same, but similar to what we saw back in uh, February of 2020 when price closed below the bottom of that weekly profile. So that's the real key area to watch. Uh, the other key area I would say would be on the NQ. The bottom of its weekly profile is 1480458. So those would really be the things to watch today at the end of the day. And certainly you'll have a better feel come close to two o'clock if you're listening at the uh, recorded show. So folks, I want you to have a fantastic Friday, a fabulous weekend, and I'll look forward to seeing you again on Magnificent Marvelous Monday. Take care. Thanks so much for joining us.